Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about a very important clinical question. How much fluid restriction should you keep your patient on? Most of us will usually opt for 1 to 2 liter free water restriction, though there is much better and logical way to do this. So let's understand the concepts behind this. From the previous lecture, we understood that sodium homeostasis requires ADH, which results in aquaporin molecules in the collecting ducts, and that governs your urine concentration. And if you have to drink the maximum amount of water to excrete what you eat, so for example, a normal American diet has 1000 milliosmoles, you would need around 1000 milliosmoles divided by the most dilute urine that you can make, that is 50 milliosmoles per liter. So you can drink up to 20 liters to get rid of 1000 milliosmoles without any problem with your sodium concentration or causing hyponatremia. But if you drink more than this, you would not be able to pee out that extra volume and that is going to cause hyponatremia. We also learned that diluting capacity of kidneys depends upon the ADH state. So as your ADH concentration increases, so does your number of aquaporin molecules in your collecting ducts. You absorb more free water, thereby make more concentrated urine. So in a state of a constant ADH presence, for example, happens in lung cancer or any other SIADH condition or low effective circulating volume states, this ADH is going to worsen your diluting capacity of kidneys. Higher the ADH response, higher the urine osmolality and worse is the urine diluting capacity. And this is important because to get rid of 1000 milliosmoles, you now require only 1.6 liters if you drink any more than that, you are going to become hyponatremic. So if your sodium was 130 and you ate 1000 milliosmol and your urine osmolality was 600 milliosmol per liter, drinking 1.6 liters is not going to change your sodium level because total input is equal to total output. If you put this patient on 1.6 liter fluid restriction and he drinks exactly 1.6 liter, his serum sodium is not going to change. If he drinks less than 1.6 liter, his serum sodium will slowly rise and lower the fluid restriction, you will see the faster rise in sodium levels. If he drinks more than 1.6 liter, his serum sodium will start falling and the faster fall will happen if he's drinking more amount of free water than 1.6 liter. Now you can use this number to fluid restrict your patient so if you want to increase the sodium, you fluid restrict him to one liter. And if you want to decrease the sodium, do not fluid restrict him and encourage free water intake more than two liters. One of the assumptions that we are making in this is we usually restrict our patients for fluid in which hyponatremia is present. And when your hyponatremia is present, technically your urine osmolality is going to be the lowest urine osmolality your body can achieve. So step one, check your urine osmolality as it will give you the diluting capacity of the kidneys. If you are on a two gram salt restricted diet, you are eating around 600 milliosmol per day. Depending on your ADH state, your urine osmolality is going to change. So as your ADH rises, your urine osmolality is going to rise and the max amount of water that you can drink to keep the sodium from falling will drop as you can see in this table. So if you are normal, you can drink up to 12 liters without becoming hyponatremic. But if your urine osmolality is 600, if you drink more than one liter of water, you will become hyponatremic. But one of the questions that comes is everybody is not eating 1000 milliosmoles. This is really important because if you eat less amount of solute in a day, for example, 500 milliosmoles a day and your urine osmolality was 600, because of your SIADH, you only need to drink 0.8 liters. If you drink more than 0.8, you are going to become hyponatremic. So you need to adjust fluid restriction depending on amount of solute you eat. So step number two is to find out how much your patient is eating. And this is really important for patients who are admitted to the hospital because the diet intake in the hospital is very much different than at home. 
patient many times don't like hospital food. The hospital food has more salt restricted. Sometimes patients are in altered mental status and they are unable to feed enough or they are NPO for different reasons. Here, your nurses and dietitians are your best friend. They should be able to tell you how much your patient is eating. For example, they would say a patient ate a third of their meal or half their meal. That should be able to give you some idea about how much solute are they taking in. Some of these patients need even lower fluid restriction. For example, if a patient is eating only a quarter of his meal and he is on a salt restricted diet, he's possibly eating around 200 milliosmoles a day. And let's say his serum osmolality is 600 milliosmoles per liter. If this guy drinks more than 0.3 liters, he's going to become hyponatremic. There are two things that you need to know, how much your patient is eating and how much is their urine osmolality before you decide to set their fluid restriction. Fluid restriction is nothing but amount of solute they are eating divided by urine osmolality. Let's talk a little bit about heart failure patients where we commonly put them on free water restriction. Heart failure is a very interesting diagnosis. And as you know, the reason why these patients are hyponatremic is because of the lower effective circulating volume. This leads to a higher ADH state, which results in free water absorption. Worse your heart failure, lower the sodium. If a patient's sodium is normal, it suggests two things. Either your patient is not that bad of heart failure, or they are doing a pretty good job at solute fluid combination. So you can leave these patients alone. If they are hyponatremic, check their urine osmolality. Let's say his urine osmolality is around 300 milliosmol per liter. And if they're eating salt restricted diet and are adhering to it, their daily intake is around 600 milliosmol per day. So you can put them on around two liter of water restriction and they should be able to maintain their sodium levels. However, if they are not eating that well, your water restriction has to be more strict. One of the pitfalls is when you check the urine osmolality, this is a one-time look into the ADH state at the moment that urine was sent. Urine osmolality can change with different situation as your ADH can increase with CHF exacerbation and many other factors like stress, pain, anxiety, infections, etc. And this will suddenly increase their ADH, which will increase their urine osmolality. So say for example, the urine osmolality increases from 300 to 500 they will become hyponatremic if they continue to follow 2 liter water restriction. If you have noticed in all the heart failure admissions, these patients do present with lower sodium unless these patients have been altered for the past few days and they were not able to take in any free water. This lecture was specifically meant to have some idea about how fluid restriction work. You need to know amount of food and urine osmolality to give you an idea about how much fluid restriction does your patient need. Unfortunately, because these things can change with time, you will never get a perfect number. However, you can use these general principles to fluid restrict somebody. Fluid restriction will depend upon how much osmol they are eating divided by urine osmolality. You will need these concepts when you discuss the free water restriction for hyponatremia. Thank you.